Good afternoon, good evening, and God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. I thank you all for coming on and joining us, loving worship with Wednesday and the Word. Um, let us pray. I hope and pray that you've all had a wonderful, successful week thus far up until this point. So let us pray before we get started. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you for your love, your grace, your mercy, your favor, just for everything that you have done, just for everything that you're going to do, just for being a great and wonderful and mighty God. Lord, for just making ways for us. Forgive us for anything we've done wrong, thought wrong, said wrong. Wash us in your blood. Now, as we come tonight to learn about your word, about your spirit, about your will for our lives, open up our hearts, open up our minds, that you may get the glory, the honor, and praise of everything we say and we do, that, Lord, that we may glorify you in our our actions and our behaviors that people may see that there is a God somewhere. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I right, God, God bless you all again. Thank you for coming on. Um, just a quick preliminary good evening. God bless you to my mother-in-law. For all of those who are coming in the room, please announce yourselves. Please, please announce yourselves. I know we may be um, on Facebook or YouTube or in our homes, but let us please remember that we are in a church service. We need your undivided attention. It is time for our soul. It is time for us to hear and to learn and to glean from God in regards of our soul and regards to what Lord, the Lord has for our life. God bless you all. Please, as I'm speaking, as I'm teaching, please say amen. Please use the comment section to type amen. That's me. Please tag somebody that you know may need to hear this word. Tag some individuals. Share it so that we can get the gospel out. Let us get right in to it. So we have been having a wonderful men's conference. God has been showing himself mighty and showing himself strong, but we are still in Pentecost time. So um, as I was going through um, the scriptures and praying and seeking God, um, he has given me the power of Pentecost part three. Um, we are going into Acts, the second chapter. So uh, we are going to be reading and seeing Acts, the second chapter. Um, so with that being said, let me share my screen. Acts, the second chapter. So let's get right into it. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them clothing tongues like a fire, and it sat upon each of them. Four, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And they were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. Now, when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? And how hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born? Pathians and Medes and Elamites and the dwellers in Mesopotamia and Judea and Cappadocia and Pontus and Asia. And Phrygia and Pamphylia and Egypt and in the parts of Libya about Cyrene and strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes, Cretes and Arabians. We do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. And they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, What mean of this? Others mocked and said that these men are full of new wine. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell in Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken unto my words. For these are not drunken as ye suppose, seeing as it is. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel, and it shall come to pass. In the last days, I'll pour my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on the handmaidens, I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show the wonders in heaven above. Signs and earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor and smoke. God bless the reading 
of God's holy word. That is Acts 2 all the way up until the 21st verse. Now, I wanted to show you it as we were reading because many times, thank you, my beautiful wife, many times um, we, 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 we hear the pastor preach, we hear him speaking, and if we don't read our Bibles, if we don't have a relationship with God in regards to our Bibles, we think someone may be making up some stuff or just saying this stuff. No. So today and moving forward, whenever I use a scripture context, um, we will have it posted so that it can be read. So that we could see it, that it's God's words, that it's not Pastor Mason just making up something. It's not something he wrote in his notes or something that he just made up on the spot. No, this is God's word. Here at Love and Worship Center, we learn about God's words, not mess, not drama, not my opinions. God's words, the unadulterated gospel of Jesus Christ. Because in this last and evil day, with so many change and so many changes and different things, and the world is in so many trends. Positions. The word of God is still right. The word of God is still powerful. The word of God is still the answer, the antidote, the, 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 the solution to the equation of life, because we can find out how to get the answers of life in the book of life. So we see in Acts 2, where the day of Pentecost is fully come, and we see that these men um begin, the Holy Ghost falls on them and they begin to speak in tongues. The Bible says in the fourth verse of Acts 2, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. This is very important. So give you some historical context in the Old Testament. Uh, many of us have heard, and if you have not, there was a situation called the Tower of Babel. The Tower of Babel or Babel. They call it Babel because that's where God confounded the languages. And there was a group of individuals, um, Kenya, that made up their mind that they're going to build a tower. They said, we are going to build a tower up into heaven. And God, the, 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 the scripture says that God said, these people are one. And they will accomplish this because they are one. Let me tell you something. Even when people are wrong, even when people are off and they are out of the will of God, when they are on one accord, uh, Lady Tia, there is something about being on one accord. One accord, oneness, the purpose, oh my Lord, thank you, Jesus. We have to understand that the purpose of the Holy Ghost was to come and to refine and to put God into the people of God and to grow the kingdom of God and to and to seal those, the called out ones, the ecclesia, the body of Christ. But also the Holy Ghost came to unify the church. Somebody type that in the comments. The Holy Ghost comes to unify the church. Ha, what do you mean, Pastor? The scripture says in Acts 2 and 4, the King James Version, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there, and there were dwelling at Jerusalem devout men out of every nation under heaven. Listen, now this six was noised abroad. The multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? So many people forget when the Holy Ghost came, Kira, he came to give, he came to unify language. Somebody say the Holy Ghost comes to unify language. So many people ask, why do we need to speak in tongues? Why does the Holy Ghost come with tongues? Why does it give us the ability to speak in a language that we cannot understand, but the spirit understands? Well, as I was saying, as the Tower of Babel happened and God destroyed the tower and he, and he, and he, and he confounded the languages and gave them all their own languages so now they can no longer work together to do that which God did not want them to do. First point, because they were off. Here where they were off at. They were off Satora because God never intended for us to go where he was. God always intended for us, for God to come where we are. 
They were off. So, so many times in church, Kira, we have the right idea. We have the right intentions. We have the right motive. We're pure. We're not in it for the wrong reasons, but we have the wrong methodology. The Tower of Babel, they had the wrong methodology. So when they had the wrong methodology and they wanted to... um make a tower to go to heaven, which God never designed for us to get to heaven that way. Because the new in, in Revelation, the Bible says, I see a new heaven and a new earth coming out, coming to us. So many of us, we know we, we, we know we live right. We go to heaven, but going to heaven doesn't mean getting in my car. Like it means going to a loved one's house. It's a spiritual place and heaven is coming to us, but we'll get to that on a later date. So we see here, in Acts, this is the New Testament. Jesus already had left. It had been 10 days, the day of Pentecost, which made it 50, was fully come. And guess what? It said, they were all amazed, marveled, saying one to another, behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? Are not all of us to speak Galileans? How are these people? How are they speaking in our language? How are they? How are they speaking? How are they? How do we, how can they hear us? How can we hear them speaking in our native language, in our native tongue? We hear them. We understand them. But hold on. These men are Galileans. These men are, these men are from Galilee. These men are Galileans. What, what, what's, hold on. How come we can hear them speaking in our language and we understand them, but they're not, they're not, the Bible says there was men. Jews, devout, of Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, dwellers of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia. There were so many different people there at the time when the day of Pentecost was fully come. And when the Holy Ghost came, he gave them all a language. Guess what? Not that they understood it, but when they spoke it, the hearer understood it. This is why tongues is very important. It unifies the body of Christ. It's not just so that we can seem deep and spooky and spiritual and 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 so um and so deep and so caught up and things of that nature no it's for us to be unified. It was a universal language. The tongues came to unify the church. This is why I be so confused, y'all, when people can speak in tongues but not speak English to their brother or their sister. I be highly confused when we can um, speak in tongues, be super spiritual and deep and spooky and fall out and fall all over the place, but we can't speak to one another. We can't speak to one another. Halfway talk to one another. Halfway treat one another. Halfway, halfway respect one another. That ought not to be so. That ought not to be so. We ought to respect one another enough that if we got the Holy Ghost, we ought to be able to speak in tongues, but also speak in English. Speak in tongues, but also respect one another. Speak in tongues, but also be able to converse with one another because God didn't give us the spirit just so we can be deep and spooky and, and create miracles and signs and wonders. No, he did it so that we could. We could be unified. Why the church, why, why the world is disarrayed and why the world can't get along. And while everything else is going on, Everything else is going on here and there. And why people are fighting in his wars and rumors of wars. God gave the spirit of himself so that he could what? Unify the church. This is why the men, the Bible says they were confounded. They were amazed. And somebody said, hold on. These men are drunk. They drunk. So many times. How many times people have told you, Kenya, you believe in too much. It don't take all that. You drunk. Or Tia, it don't take all that. Or Kira, you go to church every Sunday. Or Tia, you believe in God. You 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 pay tithe. You pay offering. You believe in forgiving your neighbor. You don't you don't do get back. You don't kill their dog if they kill your cat. You don't post or sub them on social media when they when they sub or post about you on social media. Why why is that? It it that that's not good. No 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 no. Because they don't understand that. Guess what? When I got God's spirit, I got God's character. And when I have God's character, I put it in God's hands and I so I can keep my hands clean. We need the spirit of God so that we can have His character to have his characteristics, not just to speak in tongues, but to treat each other right in English. It's great to speak in tongues. This is why the men said they were all amazed, 12. They were amazed and saying in doubt, saying one to another, what mean of this? 
13 verse said, one said, these men, these men are drunk. They full of some good wine. They got that new hen rod. They got that new henny. They got that new douce. They got that new, they got that new Teremia. They got that new, they got that new casa. Yeah, yeah. But, but Peter stood up saying, hold on. Hold on one second. I'm paraphrasing. Peter standing up with the 11, lifted up his voice and said unto them, ye men of Judea, listen, all you that are around, I need you to hear this. And all ye that dwell in Jerusalem, listen up. Be this known unto you and hearken unto my words being, listen to me. Listen to me. I got something to say, Kenya. How many times people be saying something? Well, uh, James Brown had a song said, you're talking loud, but you ain't saying nothing. Talking loud. You, you, you moaning and groaning. You can, you can hoop. You can you you can uh, holler, but but a whole a plate full of gravy ain't no meat. You're gonna talk about prophecy and blessings and bountifulness, but you ain't gonna talk about loving and mercy and grace and forgiveness. No, that ought not to be. So we see here. Peter says unto them, hearken unto my words, for these are not drunken as ye suppose. Seeing it is but the third hour of the day. Listen, they were glorifying God and God was getting so much glory that somebody who was carnal said, oh, they drunk. Oh, they drunk. Oh, they drinking. They ain't worshiping God. Sometimes people may see you in church. You you, you having your moment. You getting your breakthrough. You worshiping God. You praising God. You may seem as if you may be crazy or irate. But listen, I came to let somebody know. Let some, uh, uh, Next time they ask you, can you let them know? You don't know what I've been through. You don't know the hell and the high waters that I had to come through. You don't know the situations that I had to outlive. You don't know the lies or the negative or the negative prophecies or negative words that people spoke over my life. So excuse me while I praise God. Yeah, I'm not a cute praiser. No, I'm not a, I'm not a pretty praiser. No, I'm not a praiser that's just doing it to make it the camera or, or to make it on the live stream or to go viral or on, on a church page. No, my, my, my praise is radical. So you may drink, think I'm drunk, but I'm not drunk. I may be acting like I'm high, but I'm not high. I'm, I'm high on the spirit. I'm, I'm drunk in his love, not like Beyonce drunk in love. No, but I'm drunk on Jesus' love because Jesus loves me. This I know for the Bible tells me so. He loved me when no one else would love me. He loved me when uh, no one else wanted to be around me or deal with my mess ups or my mistakes or my bad decisions. He loved me when they threw me away because I had that kid out of wedlock or I had that abortion or I had that addiction or I couldn't stop lying or I couldn't stop drinking or I couldn't stop cursing or I couldn't stop being messy I couldn't stop gossiping. No, he loved me through all of my mess. So when I come to church, whether it be on Zoom, whether it be on um, Facebook or YouTube or Instagram or whatever platform it may be, I know it may seem like I'm crazy. I know it may seem like I'm radical. I know it may seem like I done lost my mind because I got a praise that's on the inside. This joy that I have, the world didn't give it and the world cannot take it away. I'm just grateful. Let them know I'm grateful. I'm thankful. That's why I praise like this. Peter was letting them know, hold on now. We ain't drunk. It ain't but, but the third hour. It's the third hour. We ain't drunk. It's three o'clock. It's three o'clock. It's three o'clock in the afternoon. We ain't drunk. It's, it's the third hour. We ain't drunk. Look, look at the time of day. We ain't drunk. Listen, listen, I, I, I'm not drunk. We not high. I'm not crazy, Kenya. I didn't lose my mind. Guess what? Peter let them know, listen, they're not drunk, but this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. I got to stop right there. In this day and age, so many of us are looking for a prophecy. We are looking for a word. We are looking for some great thing that God is going to say to somebody. Somebody going to call us out of a um on a on a line and call us out and tell us our name and tell us what we've been through and tell us what we're going through and 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 but and we're looking for prophecy here and all of that. But when but 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 here Peter is talking about the prophecy 
of, of the Holy Ghost, the prophecy of Pentecost. This was not a happening chance, Tia. This was not a happening chance, Torah. This was not a happening chance, uh, Mama Lou. This, this is not just a happening chance, Kira. This is not by happening chance. These people were not just in the right church service at the right time and then something just happened. No, this was prophesied by the prophet Joel. And it said in the 17th verse, and it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God. Guess what? I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Listen, on your sons and look, 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 and your sons and your daughters, women and men. We got to stop that. We got to leave that old school way in the old time. God can use a man just as well as God can use a woman. We got to get that idea out of our head. Listen, he said, and it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, black flesh, white flesh, orange flesh, yellow flesh, any type of flesh, all flesh, big, tall, short, skinny, fat, um, all type of flesh. God is going to get the glory out. And your sons and your daughters, listen, shall prophesy. Prophesy. Now listen, prophecy in this scripture and in the Bible, a lot of times we think prophecy is, oh, thus saith the Lord of God. No, 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 no. You get in the house, you get in the car, you get no, 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 no. Prophecy is the spreading of the good news of Jesus Christ. Type that in the comments. True prophecy is spreading the good news or the gospel of Jesus Christ. If you spread the gospel of Jesus Christ, the good news that he came, he lived, he died, he rose, went back to heaven and sent the Holy Ghost. If you are spreading that gospel, guess what? You're a prophet. Guess what? You're a prophetess. You don't need to have the title. You don't have the position. You don't need to act super deacon, spooky. Listen, we be so spooky sometimes. No, we're not talking about, no, 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 no. Prophecy here, they shall prophesy. Guess what? And your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. Hear what he's saying here. Your, this is the scripture from the Old Testament. Hear me now. And, and Peter's reminding them, this was, this was told years ago, generations ago. This was told. And now that it came to pass, this is so funny. Some so many times when um Satora, so many times when we think about Christianity and we think about belief, and so many times people are going to church, people are have positions, but they are unbelievers. Because when Peter was saying this, there were people around that were around the temple. So there's going to be some times when God shows you he's going to do something new in your life, new in your family, new in your spirit, give you a new vision, a new plan, a new outlook. And guess what? People around you, Kenya, are not going to understand it. People around you are not going to get it. They're going to be confused. They're going to say you're crazy. They're going to say you lost your mind. They're going to say it's never going to work. It's never going to happen. God won't do it. He's not in it. You missed. You are off. You heard the wrong word. You heard the wrong prophecy. God didn't say that. But guess what? When it comes to pass, those same people going to see it. And they're going to try to take the glory from God. But guess what? They can't take the glory from God because they said it wasn't going to happen and it happened. They said God wouldn't do it and he did it. They said he wouldn't show up and he showed up. They said he wouldn't heal you and he healed you. They say you couldn't get delivered and now you're delivered. So now they're going to try to use something carnal to make, to, to, to try to get, to, to, to block what God or to try to cover up the goodness of what God is doing in your life. But it's all right. The next time something works out in your life, let them know it was prophesied. Somebody type that in the comments. It was prophesied. It was it was prophesied. It was it was no, not a house, no, not a car, no, not 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 a new opportunity. No, it was prophesied. Somebody say it was prophesied. Yeah, my ministry was prophesied. That spiritual gift was prophesied. That vision and plan to build up the ministry was prophesied. That plan, that idea. Where'd you get the money? It was prophesied. Yeah. Where'd 
you come up with the plan? It was prophesied. Where did you come up with the resources? You don't make that much money. You don't have that much family. You don't come from a silver spoon. How did it work out for your good? Somebody say it was prophesied. Type that in the comments. It was prophesied. It was prophesied. It says, your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall dream, shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Listen, here the prophecy is saying the old and the young. Listen, the young man's vision is the old man's dream. Oh, my God. Listen here. The, old, the young man's vision is the old man's dream. Listen to this. So many times people try to, oh, you too young. Oh, you too old. No, the old man's dream is the young man's vision. Oh, my God. The, the, what the older generation dreamed about what they wanted to come to pass, guess what? It's the young and the, the young man's and the young woman's, it's their vision. They can see it. Guess what? Guess what? The Moses generation, Moses couldn't take um, the generation to the promised land. Joshua had to stand up, but guess what? It was Joshua's vision, but it was Moses' dream to make it to the promised land. Let me tell you something. Old and young, we ought to work together. God designed it for us to work together, not to say, oh, they're too old to listen to them, or they're too young for God to use them. The devil is the liar. The Bible says the old and the young, let them go forth together. We need the old because they're wise. They experienced something. They've been through some things that we ain't experienced yet. They went through some wars. They got some battle wounds. They got some scars from life with serving God and believing in God and still being with God. And they call the young because they're strong. Yeah, we strong. We can deal with some stressful things without it causing us to break down or break up or go through a mental breakdown because of the youth. Uh, but let's not forget the old man. The old man's dream is the young man's vision. My God, that'll preach. The old man's dream is the young man's vision. We need the old just as well as the young. Guess what? And on my servants, 18, and on my handmaidens, I will pour out in those days of my spirit and they shall prophesy. Guess what? God is giving us. He's saying men, women, boys, girls, child, rich, poor, middle class. Listen, millionaires, billionaires, working class. I'm going to pour out my spirit. The purpose of me pouring out my spirit is for you to what? Go tell the good news of Jesus. So many of us don't understand the purpose of the Holy Ghost. The purpose of the Holy Ghost is to give us power to empower others. Simple. Give the church power to go out of the church. Go out of the four walls, learn about God, get taught, get trained, get, get settled in the gospel. Then live holy enough, live sanctified enough to receive the spirit, to go outside and get somebody else and tell them about the good news of Jesus. It doesn't mean prophecy here does not mean, oh, the, the said the Lord, Ooh, you're going to get a card. Da, 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 oh. No, stop the spooky stuff. Stop it. No. The prophecy in this context, in this scripture, as the author is writing, he is letting them know that God said, I'm going to pour out my spirit on the servants, on the handmaidens. I will pour out of those days of my spirit and they shall prophesy. They shall go from place to place telling the good news of Jesus. Question for you today. Who did you tell about Jesus? You got the Holy Ghost, right? Let's say for those who have it, for those who don't have it, you need it. You need it. You need it. It's essential. You need it because it is the power that God gives to us to go in power. Oh, my Lord. God gives us the Holy Ghost power so that we can go in power. Others to go what? Tell the good news of Jesus to talk about a God that was there when nobody else was there. Listen, so many of us will not tell the testimony of the goodness of what God did in our life because we haven't received the Holy Ghost in our life to tell God, to tell people about what God did for us. 
Yeah, you go to church. That's great. Yeah, you're saved. That's great. But we got to spread the gospel. How do I spread the gospel? I'm not a pastor. I'm not a bishop. I'm not a, I'm not a preacher. I'm not a teacher. I'm, I'm not a person that's well-spoken. Well, you got a testimony, right? You got a testimony, right? You've been through something, right? God delivered you out of something, right? God healed you out of something. He brought you through something. So guess what? When you receive the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost comes with what? A language, as we've learned. It comes with tongues. The Bible says they spoke in other tongues. It comes with a language. The same way your shoes come with a tongue in it, the Holy Ghost comes with a tongue. If you have the Holy Ghost, if you're saying you have the Holy Ghost and you don't speak in tongues, that is not the Holy Ghost. If you're saying you have the Holy Ghost and you don't declare the good news of Jesus, you don't let other people know about the God that's living inside of you, because if you're saying you have the Holy Ghost, that means God is not only coming upon you, he dwells in you and lives in you. He should live through you enough for you to witness to somebody else about the goodness of Jesus. To tell somebody else about the God that's so great and so wonderful and so powerful. It's not so we can be deep and spooky, Kenya. Come on, Tia. It's not so we can be deep and spooky, Mama Lou, and try to seem spiritual and more spiritually high-powered than others. Some people get the spirit, oh, 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 trying to seem deep and spooky. I don't understand tongues. I speak English. In English, after you're done speaking in tongues, have you, in English, gone and spoke to somebody about Jesus? After you done fall out over the floor, rolled up, spit up, and did ac and did acrobatics like you were doing a P90X, that's all great. Did you go and tell somebody about Jesus? Did you go and invite somebody to your church? Oh, I don't, I don't know. I don't have that many people. You got a Facebook, right? You got Facebook friends. How many Facebook friends did you share the video to or share the ministry that you love and what God is doing in your life? How many people you share? People that have you tagged in a video that you know helped you get through a difficult time and uplift you and give you the motivation to keep believing in God in this difficult time. How many people did you tag in the video? For those of us who are on now, how many people of us are tagging, are liking, are sharing this video? See, in this new day and age, it takes away the excuse. It takes away the excuse. We can post this, we can post that, we can post recreation, we, we can post our kids, we can post our family, we can post our friends, we can post the news, but can we post about Jesus? Is your social media profile Jesus friendly? No, not that Jesus is just in your bio. Oh, Team Jesus, he's just popping, God first. No, when people see your social media profile, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, Twitch, whatever you have, LinkedIn, Periscope, um, 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 all of these different things, all these different platforms, is it a platform that you use to glorify Jesus or is it a platform that we use to glorify flesh? So just post things so that we can get likes, but we don't post things so that people can find out that we're Christ-like. Or are we still ashamed to tell the good news of Jesus? Are we still trying to keep Jesus the best kept secret? You don't have the Holy Ghost. Are we trying to keep Jesus the are we still trying to keep him in our bosom? Are we trying to like like we do with clothes when we find a good vendor? Um if 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 if, if we find a good vendor or good clothes and all this other stuff, people ask you oh, where you got it from, and now you don't tell them. Are we still trying to harbor it and keep Jesus all to ourselves when we know he died for all of us? He came for purpose for all of us, and we see in the scripture the Holy Ghost is for all of us, rich, poor, white, black. Yellow, green, blue, and technicolor, whatever color you may be, whatever creed, whatever nationality. That is always the spirit. The gospel is for all. Or do we only post and share things about us or our church when we on the program? Or oh, I'm on the program, or oh, I'm on the flyer, so I'm gonna post it. Or oh, or oh, or oh, oh, I'm I'm a part of it, so I'm gonna post it. I'm gonna be up, I'm part of the program. So I'm going to post it. And this is why we need the Holy Ghost, because the Holy Ghost gets rid of all of that petty, silly, foolish stuff. 
and helps us realize that what? It's not about us. It's all about Jesus. Because what? We have to get them to Jesus. Just like we had to get Jesus, right? To get in Jesus, then live sanctified enough so that we can receive the Holy Ghost so that Jesus can be in us. So that we can go and go de- and go get other people so that they can experience this great God, this wonderful God, this beautiful, this powerful, this mighty, this amazing God that we love so much because he's so great and he's so amazing that we got to go tell somebody about it. We got to go tell somebody about Jesus Christ. That's right, Kenya. How many people are you telling about Jesus? Or are you still ashamed? If you are ashamed, that's why Paul said, I feel you, Jesus. He said, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. For it is the power of salvation. It's the power. The power that I got. The power for me to live right. The power for me to do right. The power for me to understand right and think right and behave right. Even though my flesh is so wrong. It comes from the gospel. Because if we don't believe the gospel, then we can't receive the gospel in us. The fulfillment of the gospel. Jesus fulfilled the gospel, then sent the Holy Ghost to seal us. That's right, Tia. Refill me. Fill me. Fill me so I can stop being so mean, so hateful, so ornery. Fill me, Lord, so I can stop trying to be violent. And, and and rather ob- obey the scripture that the kingdom of su- the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, but the violent taketh by force. Let us stop. Let us stop. Let us stop. Let's stop using excuses to use God. No, no, no. The Holy Ghost doesn't use God as a pit bull. Sick them, God. Get them, Jesus. They did me wrong. They ain't do this. They ain't support me. No. The Holy Ghost says, pray for your enemies. My God, do good to them that spitefully use you and abuse you. Why? Because the spirit knows that guess what? If I'm right, even when they're wrong, I will receive the right payment for God. But if they're wrong and I get wrong and our two wrongs together, then we both wrong. And we can't be wrong living right. Can't be thinking wrong living right. Because remember, it says a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. The Holy Ghost came. It was intentional. Jesus intentionally came. When God was looking for somebody to come and do the payment and die for the world, he looked and searched. And Jesus said, no, Father, give me and prepare me a body that I may go intentionally, go down to earth, live holy. Yeah, live right. Fulfill Fulfill the law. Die, because without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sins. Die. Go to hell. Take back the power of death. The keys from death led the power of death. Oh, grave, where is thy where, where, where is thy sting? Oh, 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 death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? Why? Because I took back the power of death from him who had the keys to death. Guess what? Now when we die, we don't got to die no more. You don't have to die twice. If we live right, the old folks would say, if I live right, heaven belongs to me. The Holy Ghost is about eternal life. Why? Because the what? The kingdom of heaven is not meat. Listen, it's not meat. It's not drink. It's not anything physical. You cannot get to heaven in your car. You can't get there in a plane. Can't get there on a hoverboard. Can't get there on a scooter, on a motorcycle, on a quad, on a on a tricycle. You can't get there in this flesh. Can't even get there with the flesh or the body you got now. But what? The kingdom of heaven is what? Not meat nor drink, but it's what? Righteousness. Joy, peace, what? In the Holy Ghost. The only way we're going to go where God is is if we have God in us. What's going to translate us, Kenya? What's going to change us, Tia? What's going to what's, what's gonna make this mortal immortal? What's going to make this corruptible incorruptible? What's going to make us be a spiritual being? We got to have his spirit in us. <clears throat> we got to have, excuse me, his spirit in us. No purgatory. That was a liar. There's no waiting period after Jesus come back. The only amount of time you got, listen to me, beloved, because I know so many people believe these, these little silly stories and belief systems that have no scriptural context to them. After you die, there is not a second chance. This is your chance. And there was only one thief on the cross. So not do not live a life full of hell. 
and think when it's time for you to go, oh, Lord, forgive me for all my sins. I'm going to heaven. No, there was only one thief on the cross. I do not want to bank on maybe getting in, maybe going to heaven, maybe going to spend eternity with my father. No. So what do we got to do? I have to what? Get saved. Come on. Let's say it with me. Type, type this in. I must first get saved. What is being saved? Believing that Jesus Christ came to earth in the form of a man, but was 100% God, died on the cross, was crucified, dead and buried. They buried him. He rose from the dead three days later, stayed for 40 days of many and follow as we what? We learned last week of many infallible proofs, then the disciples waited 10 days. 40 plus 10 is 50. Pentecost. Penti. That word penti is five. So you have the Pentagon. The Pentagon, which is in which is in Washington, D.C., is a building with five points on it. The day of Pentecost was fully come. He sent the Spirit, and as we're learning, he, he reminded them, listen, this was prophesied. Listen, this was prophesied. It shall come to pass, 21, that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Listen, it was prophesied that getting Jesus, accepting Jesus is not the totality of the kingdom of God. That believing in Jesus is not the totality of believing in God. Hear me. Jesus, yes, he's our Lord. Yes, he's our Savior. Yes, he's our King. He's the King of Kings. He's the Lord of Lords. Yes, there's power in his name. There was power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. Yes, but after we receive his work on the cross, we can't forget about the residue after resurrection. My God. The residue after resurrection is his spirit because that's what resurrected him. It was the Holy Ghost that resurrected Jesus. It was the Holy Ghost that brought him back to life after everyone knew he was dead. We need his spirit to be powered, to get power, to empower, not to be great. Not to make our, not to try to be wonderful, to start trending, to, de, to be like this person or that person, or try to be the next big televangelist and try to show how great you are and how special and how many gifts and talents. No, I get the Holy Ghost. Why do I get the Holy Ghost? I receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost to be empowered, to go in power, to be in power, I in power. To go in power, E M, power to go. Give others power to let them know you don't gotta, you don't gotta be like mommy and daddy. You don't gotta be a, a, a statistic. You don't gotta be a product of your environment. There's a better way. There's a greater way. There's a greater path. It's a lot bigger than you and me. It's a lot bigger than black and white. It's bigger than Russia and Ukraine. It's bigger than Africa, United States. It's bigger than anything that we can think about. The kingdom of God. That's why God lets us know in Psalms, my thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not your ways. I, I, I'm not like y'all. I don't put people in position only because I like them. Or only because only, only they special or only because they, 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 they lit or they're popular. No. God chose each and every one of us, everyone. If you're on this live, if you're listening via YouTube or Facebook, if you're on this live right now and you're listening to these words, God is talking to you. He is speaking to you. And he said in his word, the day you hear my voice, harden not your heart. For those who are on here who are saying, well, I may not be saved. I, I may not, I don't understand because we have to understand this day and age where, where everybody didn't grow up learning the Bible. Everybody didn't grow up in Sunday school, YPWW, and learning the Bible. But guess what? The mere fact that you're on this live right now, God is talking to you. God is telling you not to give up. My God, I feel you. He's telling you not to turn around. The mere fact that you came on this live, it's another opportunity that God gave for you to hear him, to, to, to receive him. Because what we have to stop doing in Christian Dome, we have to stop perpetuating the lie that God loves unconditionally. 
He does not love unconditional. He loves on condition that you take his love through the way he loved you, which was through his son. And when you receive his son, you receive what? You receive his son, live saved enough, live sanctified enough to what? Eventually receive his spirit so that not only are you in him, hear me, beloved, that you're not just in him. That you're not just in the church, you're not just having a position or a title or 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 you just feeling good, but that what he's in you. Because it's gonna come a time, this flesh is gonna rise up, some old thoughts is gonna happen, some old situations are gonna come up, some old people, some old situations, some things. When you go through a, a difficult time, the devil is going to try to bring up things. And your flesh, not even just the devil, your flesh is gonna try to revert back to its Adamic nature. To sin. This is why we need him to live in us so that we don't go back. That even when we fall, we can fall forward. Oh my God. But even when we, I remember playing football and I'm finished. Tia, I remember playing football. And when you have, when the ball carrier has the ball, the coach teaches you, even when you fall, fall forward. Why? Because you gain Chanel. You can still gain yards. You can still, listen, sometimes we're going to fall down. I feel you. Some of us may feel like, oh, I done messed up. I knew better, and I was taught better. I was raised in church, but now I done fell in love. I done fell in love with these, with this lifestyle and these situations and these people and these circumstances. How am I change now? You can still get up. That's why Jesus had to get, be the ultimate sacrifice. He had to literally, hear me, not figuratively, literally die so that the spirit of God, the Holy Ghost, could bring him back to life to show us that if he got up, that I can get up. That if he got up, I can get up. If he if he got up, if he was dead and they whooped him and they beat him all night long, I can get up from my addiction. I can get it from that bad relationship. I can get it from the divorce. I can get it from the abortion. I can get it from that homosexual lifestyle. I can get it from lying. I can get it from stealing. I can get it from cheating. I can get it from backbiting. I can get it from shacking. I can get up from, from being in an ungodly relationship, ungodly friends, ungodly soul ties. I can get up. I'm never down too low that he can't pick me up. That's why we need his spirit. That's why we need the Holy Ghost. So we can be examples of Christ so that others may come to Christ. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you for this word. We thank you for your grace, your mercy, your love, your favor. Now, God, as we all heard this word, whether it was via uh, YouTube or Facebook or someone shared it or someone tagged us, or we may see this, we may see this live, this broadcast at a later time. Lord, let us receive it in our heart. Let us get understanding that we may know to follow the steps that you have, oh God, because your way is the right way. We know there is a way that seems right to a man. There's ways that we think are right, ways and places and things that we think are right. But the end thereof is the way of death, the ending of that lifestyle, the ending of that addiction, the ending of that fun, the ending of that flesh is the end, is the way of death. So God, we, 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 we come now, God, just to ask you to help us, make us be better, to believe better, to do better to receive better so that we can show the world a better version of you. In Jesus' name, amen. At this time, I thank you all for coming on. I thank you all for coming on. I, I am grateful for the word of God. At this time, before we close out, it is the part of the service where we all can take part after that word. When you go to Applebee's or when you go to Red Lobster or you go to Ruth Chris or Philippe Child. I know some of y'all like y'all got some expensive tastes. Um, I know, I know y'all like to eat good food, and there's nothing wrong with that. If if you receive the good word on tonight, you receive the good meal, get that seed in your hand. Get that, get that seed in your hand and say, Pastor, I'm 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 sowing that seed. I'm sowing that seed. The Cash App is pinned, it's right here on this part of the screen. For those who are viewing, it's also under, it's going across the screen on a ticker. For those, get that seed. Get that seed in your hand. So you know what? I'm going to sow this seed. I'm going to sow this seed because of the word I received tonight. Because the word I received tonight is going to help me go on. It's going to help me think better. It's going to help me do better. It's going to help me know that I can achieve more. This seed is to show to, to, to show my future. I'm sowing into my future for more. Get that seed in your hand. Get that seed in your hand. Come on. Come on, y'all. Get that, get that seed. Get that seed in your hand. Get that seed in your hands. So, 
as we learn what he give bread he give seed to the sower bread to the eater multiplied your seed sown and increases the fruits of your righteousness every time you sow you're sowing towards righteousness. so many times we just give just thinking oh we're giving to me the budget or we're giving to support the ministry because the ministry got bills and those things are all great and well but what about sowing a gift to your righteousness sow that gift now sow that gift to, to into your into your righteousness. Sow that gift. Sow that seed. Get that seed in your hand. Get get that seed. Sow that seed. Sow that seed. And for all that will sow, I thank you for every gift that's given. For every what what no matter what it is, no matter what amount, for just supporting, for just sowing, for just giving into the ministry. God is going to bless you. Announcement Friday, we are still in men's conference, and Sunday ends out our men's conference. On Friday, this Friday, we have Pastor Justin Cunningham coming from Zion, Zion Evangelistic Temple in Brooklyn. My brother, who is a preacher's preacher, he's gonna bring the word on Friday. All that can please be there. We also, for those that cannot be, we also will be streaming, it will be live streamed. We will be streaming as well for those who can to only take part. Um, on the on the live stream on the live stream thank you all for coming on thank you for your gifts thank you for your sewing thank you for your time thank you for coming on you could be doing anything you could be doing anything in the world right now but you came on love and worship and you came to get a word and i pray that you get a word that can help you that can assist you that can help us be better listen i don't care more about your wallet or your gifts, or your tithe, or your offering, more than I care about your soul. I'm going to teach right. I'm going to preach right, whether the offering is a dollar or a thousand dollars, because it's about what God wants. Because if we seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all of these things will be added. He'll take care of the ministry. He'll take care of the church. If we do it right, if what? If it's his church, if it's a righteous church, if it's, if it's established in holiness and doctrine, in faith, the way he designed it to be. He'll take care of it. So I look forward to seeing you on, on Friday. Also on Sunday, 11.30 a.m., we'll be streaming as well as all that could. Please invite somebody. Tell a neighbor, tell a friend. Remember, we got the Holy Ghost to be witnesses. He said, after, after you receive the Holy Ghost, after you receive the Holy Ghost and power, you shall be a witness of me into Jerusalem, your family, in Judea, your friends, your associates, in Judea, and the people you do business with. In all the uttermost parts of the world, tell somebody about, tell somebody to come see a man that's going to tell you about a man that could change your life. Thank you all for coming on. Thank you for your gifts. Thank you for joining us. God bless you. I hope and pray you receive the word. You receive something that you can leave here with in Jesus name. Turning God, our Father, we thank you for loving us, for keeping us now, Lord, as we leave from here, even though we're in our homes, in our cars, at our jobs, at our family's house. Keep us safe in your will and your way. Keep us covered and protected us. Push back death and destruction. We thank you. We love you. We honor and we bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you all for coming on. Remember, I love you. I love you. But most importantly, God loves you. God loves you. That's Remember that. God loves you. God bless you. Have a wonderful evening.